Meanwhile, at an inn in the village of Hamlet, Hey guys, I just got an invitation for us to attend the ball and feast in Safeton. Emily, who would invite a bunch of barbarians like us to a grand ball? Hey dwarf. Who are you calling a barbar barbarian? Ralph, calm down. I think Ari was referring to all of us. Huh? Okay, a failure. If you say so. Emily, why don't you just read the invitation to us? Oh, okay. It says, to those brave and worthy, may it never be said that the courageous undertake valor for the hope of reward nor the righteous seek purity and thus may aspersions of evil never fall upon thy name. But, as you know too well, the rewards of virtue are painful and cold. Cough. You humans can be so pompous. Ari, let her finish. Ophelia, as an elf, surely you know humans, in general, cannot be trusted. Oh, Ari, not all of us humans are like that. Anyway, the rest of the invitation reads, Our advisors, through wisdom and sagacity have proclaimed thy actions good and virtuous, done for the wealth of the people of Homelit. Those so noble as yourselves will grace and ornament the presence of any gathering. We beseech you to kindly honor us with your presence during the feasts of Edward at Windy Crag in the town of Safeton. Signed, Dame Gold. Will our band of adventurers accept Dame Gold's invitation to the Feast of Edouard? Find out next time on... Hey! hey Dungeon, Dungeon Master. Master! Are you, Are you making, making fun of our robotic voices? voices? From the boozy refuse of seafront taverns to the war consuls of murderous orcs, there is only one gang that can bind and command them, the slave lords. At first, they were only a vague whisper on the lips of a few barbaric scum, a whisper that grew into an icy chill of dread and despair, the slave lords. They are masters of vile cruelty and terror. And they are unnamed and unidentified, hiding behind a veil of secrecy and deception. Hello and greetings to all you fans of RPGs and of Dungeons and Dragons. This is RPG Mods Fan. And, in this video, I will be discussing the Dungeons & Dragons campaign adventure, Scourge of the Slave Lords, which was written by David Cook, Alan Hammack, Harold Johnson, Lawrence Schick, Tom Moldvay, and Ed Carme, and published by TSR in 1986. This super module was written for AD&D first edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do quite a bit of work to convert it to fifth edition rules. Scourge of the Slave Lords is a compilation of the A1 to A4 D&D modules. Because it is a compilation of several modules, it is often referred to as a super module. During the early days of my YouTube channel, I have already reviewed and discussed each of these modules. So, I would recommend watching those videos before this one. In this video, I will be discussing only the changes and differences between Scourge of the Slave Lords and the original A1 to A4 modules. The main difference is the Scourge of the Slave Lords adds new areas and encounters to the beginning of the adventures. The Scourge of the Slave Lords was meant as a sequel to the Temple of Elemental Evil Supermodule. 
at the time of recording this video, Scourge of the Slave Lords is not available for sale on DriveThruRPG's website. Getting a copy of it on Amazon or eBay can be expensive. A couple of decades ago, I bought my PDF copy of Scourge of the Slave Lords, as well as many other D&D modules, books, etc. from svgames.com's website. Unfortunately, svgames.com website is now defunct. This campaign takes place in the fantasy world of Greyhawk, within the Orcish Kingdom of Pomage. The adventures take place at a few locations within Pramage, including the nefarious city of Highport and the environs of the Drakhansgrab hills and mountains. The overarching plot hook of the A-series modules is as follows. Organized bands of pirates and slavers have been raiding the coastal towns on the Sea of Girnat and taking captives into slavery. The Scourge of the Slave Lords super module starts with the player characters in the village of Hamlet. Again, this super module assumes the players played through the Temple of Elemental Evil, in which case the player characters are known as the heroes of Hamlet. A well-attired personal attendant of Dame Gold of Safeton will arrive in Hamlet and hand a letter to the player characters. The envelope is addressed to the Saviors of Hamlet. The letter is an invitation for the player characters to a feast being held in the town of Safeton. Assuming the player characters decide to go to Safeton, just as they are about to embark, a halfling named Rev Air will meet and greet them and ask if he could accompany the party on their journey to Safeton. Since the journey to Safeton is pretty much made up of railroad encounters, I do not think it is too much of a spoiler to reveal what happens. If you are a player and do not want to be spoiled on what happens next, then I would stop here and not watch the rest of this video. The village of Hamlet is located within the red circled area displayed on the screen. The town of Safeton is located within the red circled area displayed on the screen. When the player characters traverse through the forest, they will encounter a group of Eatons, Bugbears, Goblins, Orcs, Orgolons, and War Dogs. The encounter can go one of many ways, including avoiding it altogether. Once in Safeton, the Feast of Edward is scheduled to start within a few days. The feast is a week-long event. On the next day after the end of the feast, Dame Gold will ask the party to voyage to Hep Monoland and deliver a curative potion to her long-lost brother. As FYI, Hep Monoland is a tropical landmass southeast of the Greyhawk continent, also known as Flanass. Shortly after the player characters embark on their journey to Hep Monoland, a frantic rider will approach them and tell them that Safeton has been raided from the sea by the slavers. Now, the player characters need to make a choice of whether to continue to Hep Monoland or go back to Safeton and investigate what happened. What I have covered so far could be considered as too much in terms of spoilers. However, all I have discussed is the initial setup of the super module, which is way too long, in my opinion, and is too much of a railroad sequence of events. 
the whole initial setup of the super module deviates quite a bit from the original A series modules. In the original modules, the player characters were hired by the lords of the coastal towns to eradicate the slavers. I guess the super module is trying to give a more personal reason for the player characters to eradicate the slavers instead of being a bunch of hired thugs. Now I will be going into spoiler territory. When discussing the additions and changes done by the super module, unless you are a dungeon master who will be running the D&D A series for their players or are a player who already played through the A series and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. If the dungeon master plans on running the Slave Lords series, whether it be the Super Module or the original modules, I would suggest to go to the Great Library of Greyhawk's website. It contains concise and good information on the series. I wish I discovered the Greyhawk Library website while I was doing my review of the Slave Lord series. In the original A1 module, the female cleric Slave Lord was not given a name. In a later publication by TSR, she was given the name of Pieta, a cleric of Gromsch. Supposedly, the player characters have a choice of whether to go to Hep Monoland or go back to Safeton and investigate what happened. In actuality, the super module railroads them into going back to Safeton. Back at Safeton, the party will find the town burnt and in ruins. From their investigation, they will learn that the slavers stopped in the coastal town of Elred before coming to raid Safeton. From their investigation, they can also learn that the slavers originated from the city of Highport. The railroad adventure continues with the party heading to the town of Elred. There will be a few encounters during their journey. Elred is now governed by the agents of the slave lords. It has become a seedy and dangerous town. The slave lords have a network of spies up and down the Woolly Bay coast and by now are probably aware of the player characters. Hence, during their stay in Elred, there will be an attempt to ambush the party and take them as slaves. From various sources and means, the party will learn more about the slave lords, including the names of a few of them, and that they have a base of operations in the nefarious city of Highport. It is at this point the party is expected to journey to Highport. Regardless if they travel by land or by sea, the party will be captured by the agents of the slave lords. Then they are made to man the oars of a slaver galley called the Ghoul. I believe the enslavement of the player characters was done so that they know firsthand what it is like to be a slave as well as to give them even more of a reason to hate and seek vengeance on the slave lords. The player characters are expected to figure out a way to escape, and the super module does not provide any specific scenario for their escape. Which means that once they do escape, they will be penniless and have lost all their weapons, armor, and gear. At this point, the DM should expect disgruntled players. I would not be surprised if a few would rage quit at this point. Once they do escape, the player characters are expected to go to or already be in Highport. 
Because they are penniless and without gear, they are expected to a. take on jobs in high ports and b. gather further information about the slave lords. The rest of the super module is pretty much the same as what is in the A series modules. Since I already did videos on each of these modules, I will not be repeating myself here. Thus, all the Scourge of the Slave Lords super module did was add a prequel to the A series modules. Also, the A series modules was meant for player characters who are 2 to 4 levels lower than who the Scourge of the Slave Lords was meant for. Hence, the encounters and monsters in the A series need to be toughened up. In addition, the Scourge of the Slave Lords super module does not say what happens to Dame Gold and does not give the final fate of Dame Gold. Roll credits? Displayed are the credits found within the super module itself. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye.